Hey everyone, glad to see you here. My name is Aona and welcome to my channel. I know these days signing up for a UX bootcamp is a very popular way that UX career transitioners choose to enter the field. However, from my personal experience interviewing UX bootcamp graduates and also just from conversations with other industry UXRs, there's this general consensus that there are some common mistakes or bad habits that UX bootcamp graduates pick up that concern us a little bit. So today I will tell you all about them and how to avoid them. And even if you're not a UX bootcamp graduate, but just fairly new to the UX or UXR industry, I'm sure you'll also find lots of useful bits of information in today's video. And also wanted to make a disclaimer that all of these bad habits that I'm going to talk about today, they are due to the nature of this form of education. It's really just because this form of education involves squeezing in a large amount of material within a short period of time. So inevitably, it won't be able to communicate all of the depth of a lot of these subjects that we're gonna talk about. It's not about you, it's not about your qualifications of becoming a UX designer or UX researcher in the future, and it's by no means a discrimination against your craft. So whether or not you have been a UX bootcamp graduate or you're on the way of applying for one, I do not want this video to make you feel discouraged about choosing this form of education or feel like your achievements in that bootcamp class was dismissed. Simply see this video as a reminder and just be mindful of what to expect so you can get the most out of your experience. All right, so the first bad habit, doing research for the sake of doing research. So what does it mean? This means that you are not doing research to actually solve a research problem, but just to do research for the sake of using research methods or for the sake of accomplish that step in your process so you can say, hey, I've done research. Let me explain to you in another analogy. Let's say you're taking a watercolor class. The teacher is demonstrating all of the techniques that you can use in watercolor. And after the demonstration, the teacher is like, okay, here's the paper, here's the paintbrushes, here's the paints, go, go do it yourself. So what would you do? If it were me, I would probably just pick up my brush and try to experiment with all of the techniques that I just learned from this class. But because of this, what I ended up creating, it's not really a painting per se, because at this point, this piece of thing is not really for the goal of expressing my artistic aspirations, right? It's more about just getting myself familiar with techniques that I just learned, see what I like and what I don't like. And this is the exact same thing that happens during a UX bootcamp. And you were taught all about this flashy, fascinating UX research techniques. And the instructor was also demonstrating to you how insightful research can be and how much of an impact research can play in the whole process. Of course, you'll get really, really encouraged to try out all of these research methods when you are given a capstone project. And a lot of the times you wanted to use all of them, right? You wanted to mix persona with journey mapping, with in-depth user interviews, with surveys, all of them together. It's just a big jumbo. However, by doing so, you're missing a big point, which is what is the goal of this research? What is the one solid research problem that you're trying to solve? From there, what is the essential UX research that you need to do? Good research doesn't come from the desire of using certain research methods. When we're producing research and when we're conducting research, it's not because we wanted to try this research method because it looks so cool. You actually select an appropriate research method after you have a solid research problem in your mind, not the other way around. I want you to kind of do a little bit of reflection. If you can pull out all of the projects and case studies that you did during your class or during your UX bootcamp and really start to scrutinize all of the research that you did on those projects, right? And really think, are these the right research methods? Do I actually need this research? What insights does each one of these methods that I picked yield? And do they actually help me with my original research goal? And if you realize, oops, I think I made that mistake, don't worry about it. You don't have to throw out all of those work. As you are going through these case studies or even presenting them to your future employer, you can simply say, well, when I first did this project, I was still fairly new to the UX and UXR world, and I don't really know what's the right method to choose. So I combined a lot of them together. Now that I learned a little bit more, I realized the most appropriate methods to use for this study and for my goal is actually just XYZ. So crisis reversed. All right, the second bad habit, doing persona research in a wrong way. 
because there are two common issues that I see when UX bootcamp graduates are using the persona research method. The first issue is doing persona research in every single project, even for those that clearly don't really need a persona research. The second issue, which is more common, is not knowing the correct and rigorous way of doing persona research. For example, you only interviewed three participants and then you came up with three persona profiles. Does that sound like you? I know a lot of you would argue, well, I'm still new to the field. So of course, you know, my execution of research methods have flaws. But the reason why that I call out persona research in particular is because persona research is a very sophisticated research method and it takes a lot of rigor to do it right. A lot of the times it takes a lot of longitudinal planning and involves using both qualitative and quantitative research methods. If you're not aware of it or mindful of it, you'll end up bringing a lot of problems into the validity of your insights, which lowers the quality of your research. And when you are presenting this research to an interviewer, in our eyes, it shows poor rigor and poor craft. Another thing I wanna call out, which I feel like there's a misunderstanding among a lot of bootcamp students, creating persona is not necessarily the first goal of research when you have a new product idea. There's not really a textbook definition that says you have to do persona research every time you have a new product idea or you wanna create something new. It's a possible outcome of your first batch of foundational research, but not a necessity. Because at the beginning, of a project or a product, nobody truly knows, right? What the product would become or how it would evolve eventually. So it's really challenging and almost impossible for a researcher to have this magical brush and paint all of the future user profiles very, very accurately. So what is the first step of research when you have this new product idea that you don't know if it's the right thing? I know it might sound cliche, but your first step should always be to just find and talk to your prospect or hypothesized target audience. Just, just talk to them and enough of them. And once you have interviewed and talked to enough folks and start seeing trends emerging of their needs, of their pain points, of their motivations, of their goals. And now it's time to distill these shared attributes that you discovered from your conversations into insights that help guide your team's product strategy. Will they eventually become user personas? It might be, it might be not. But to get to that goal, you would really need an enough sample. We're talking about both qualitative sample to uncover all of the attributes and also possibly following up with a quantitative research method to really capture the size in the general public. Because essentially a persona is a generalization of a group of users that share common traits. So now, if you realized you have made the same mistake in the past, don't fret. Again, you don't have to throw out your work. Do a little bit of a self-reflection on what went wrong. Be comfortable to admit that this is not the most rigorous approach for persona research, but you are mainly doing it as you're pretty new to the field and you're trying things out. So it shows the interviewer that you don't have a misunderstanding of how to use a research method. You're simply having restricted resources to do it in the right way. All right, now moving on to the third bad habit is ignoring the sampling strategy when recruiting research participants. It means that when you're trying to recruit participants to talk to, you don't have a clear strategy or criteria in mind. You don't have a clear goal of who I should talk to. And because of this, you ended up having not enough qualified data points. This happens a lot, especially in qualitative research projects that I've seen. For qualitative research, if you don't have adequate data points, you don't have drawable patterns because you cannot reach saturation. Before you're going into doing qualitative research, always think about who do you need to talk to? Do you need to talk to people with different characteristics, different age groups, different gender? Are there specific behavioral traits that you're looking for? Are they current users of a product? Or are they new users of a product? Set a very clear participants recruiting criteria for yourselves and then try to fill those buckets with enough data points. I know for a student's project, it's really, really hard to get the perfect number or the perfect sample for your study. But at least when you're presenting this case study to your interviewer, when you're laying out those criteria, we understand that you have that rigor. Number four bad habit, mixing research questions with interview questions. I think this is a concept that a lot of the instructors from these educational programs didn't really clarify. Research questions and interview questions 
They are two different things, although sometimes the way we're asking them can feel very similar, but they serve two very different purposes. To give you an example, let's say you're working on a new app that helps people to get movie tickets really easily. So that is your product or business goal help users get movie tickets easily. And then your research goal becomes understand or evaluate whether this new concept is going to make movie tickets purchasing easier. So from that research goal, you are translating them into measurable questions. And this will be a research question. For example, first, what are the current ways users use to purchase movie tickets? Second, what's currently working well and what's currently not working well? Third, are there currently any underserved user needs in the space? Fourth, can users successfully purchase movie tickets using our feature? And five, how do they feel about our feature compared to their normal way of purchasing movie tickets? All right, so these will be your research questions. And then what is an interview question? An interview question is when you decided to talk to an end user, you need to then translate these research questions into answerable questions for your communication with the end user. You might be wondering, so why can't they be the same thing? Why can't I just ask the same set of research question to the end user? Most of the time, you cannot directly ask a research question to the end user because one, they are really hard to answer. And second, they might be leading. To get to the answer to a research question, you need a lot of additional complimentary question to help you build rapport with the participants to make both of you feel comfortable. Then the participants are willing to tell you more. For example, for my first research question, what's the current methods users use to buy movie tickets? So the right way to actually build that report and get the answers to that research question would be, hey, are you a movie person? How often do you watch movies? Do you watch it on TV? Or do you watch in a movie theater? When was the last time you watched a movie in the theater? Could you remember? Oh, last week. All right, do you remember where you purchased the movie ticket? Oh, that app. Curious to know, is that the app that you normally get movie tickets? How do you like it? Do you use any other things to buy movie tickets? Can you give me an example? So when you are planning a research study or when you're presenting a case study during a UX research or UX design interview, make sure you articulate very clearly of what your research questions are and what your interview questions are. Number five bad habit, attempting to solve 99 problems. So for example, you wanted to make an app that's targeted in mental health. You went out, you did your research, you understood users' needs. Now you came up with this product that scrambles all the features in the world that you think could benefit that people who are seeking mental health help. So you're creating a live chat with therapists. You are pairing them with the right therapist. You are building a community. You are having you know, meditation activities for every single one of them. This is not necessarily wrong if you have a huge product team that's backing you up. In the case of a bootcamp, you probably only have like two to three team members. It's really hard for you to get a crisp understanding and also value proposition of all of these problems that you're trying to solve. It's lacking focus. The success of your product is not categorized by how many use cases you're solving for, but it's more about are you accurately and appropriately addressing one solid user problem or user pain point. Last but not least, the final bad habit, which is also research related, asking biased or leading or wrong interview questions during a user interview. This will significantly reduce the validity of your research and also make your design direction that comes after it questionable. There are a ton of resources online on how to ask the right interview question during a user interview. After watching this video, again, I want you to go back to all of your case studies before and check your moderation guide and see what were the questions that you actually asked the participants. If you do find some leading or biased or wrong questions that you ask the participants, it's okay, don't worry about it. We all make mistakes when we first started. Feel comfortable admitting your mistakes. You need to tell us how you would do differently next time. And if after watching today's videos, you realize, oh my gosh, I make way too many mistakes in my projects, start a new one. And this time, do it right. 
All right, I know this video is a little long, so thank you so much for watching it till this point. I hope you're getting enough information from this video to help you avoid making the same mistakes again. If you want to see more of these videos about UX and UX research, feel free to support my channel by liking this video and also subscribe to my channel so more people can discover my channel. All right, I hope to see you in more of my future videos. Bye.